they have this thing called name ID. Mm -hmm. Now it's meet ID. Yes. Epox and uh, and name ID will be impossible to live without. Epox is like a, a, a post box that you have, which you get where you get all official letters. We get very few letters by mail, like in paper anymore. Yeah. We get uh, things from the government, tax and schools and everything. We get it in that digital thing and you use your name ID to open it. Yeah. It's like an app. Um, when you're born in Denmark, you get a CPR number. It's like your day of birth and then four secret digits. Yes. And that is like your personal number, uh, which identifies you from everyone else. Yeah. And recently, in recent years, we have gotten an app on our phones which we can use to authenticate. So if I want to have a loan, if I want to make a mobile phone subscription, if I want to look at my medical records, I can do it on my phone and I can use that app to prove that I am me, that I'm not trying to steal my information or make a false loan or something. Yeah, so Denmark, very organized. <laughs> Number six, mm -hmm. Danish humor. Mm -hmm. We are very funny. No. What? No. We're, we're very funny. I'm very funny. It's just annoying. It's annoying humor. I make you laugh often. <laughs> ah, it's annoying. It's not funny. Well, we can... I think we can joke around with things that are not accepted other places. I've heard that like we can make like very dark points, like uh, joke around with murder or like, horrible things yeah. that people don't really think. find funny. Yeah, it's too offensive. But Danish people, they will push it. It's not so, it's not so nice. And another thing we use a lot is irony and sarcasm. A lot. And like irony, I'm sure you people know it, but Danish people use it from what foreign people say all the time. It's so like, oh, that's a nice shirt you're wearing. That's sarcasm. That's mean. Like that is, I'm saying your shirt is nice, but I mean the opposite. That is really mean. <laughs> <laughs> so. Number seven. What is that? Youth freedom. Oh, they have freedom? If you're a teenager, Denmark is the perfect place to live. Mm. <laughs> Why is that? Danish teenagers. They can start dating at as early as 13. That's okay. Well, I think they start dating from when they enter school. Like in first grade, they will say, oh, I have a boyfriend. And then you're like, okay. Yeah, but... but, but then, and then they will say the same in third grade. Yeah, okay. Then they'll say it in fourth grade, but in fifth grade, in sixth joking, grade. They're just joking, joking. But the thing is, they keep doing it. So you don't know, like, when is it? Serious? When is it not? So it's just the same it, thing. When they're like eight, nine, of course it's not serious. Yeah, but then, okay, when does it change? Which day? You can from, see no, it. No, no, no. From, from uh, Tell me the date. Like when they're uh, when they are 13 exactly on the birthday, the day before or the two days before? Or? Well, when it's constantly that same boy or girl. Then you know so it's So you serious. force them to break up when no, you know it's No, because it does not... When they're like seven, eight, nine, it's always <sighs> like a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend every week. But when they turn 12, 13, yeah, it's very okay to date. But they 13. don't really date. That is another thing. They come home with hickeys, you know. You know what a hickey is? Yeah, I, I, yeah you're pointing <laughs> to your neck. Uh, do you want me to wait, make one on you? I'll try. <laughs> I dare you to try on that next or I'm, I'm touching my neck because that's where you'll see it yes but since they're, they're most of them like you know are white you will see that like, you think that somebody has been strangling them but yes. not really yes it's like a way of I think okay this is very um, psychological maybe I think it's a way of marking your territory it's a way of showing that your partner is taken I think oh, that is a I, can, I can I can give you a hickey. Yeah. Actually, I don't know how to give a hickey. <laughs> oh, definitely. Ah, you need to learn that. that. Maybe not it's on a, my neck when I go to work. It's a thing. <laughs> yes, but they're free to date, mm -hmm. and their parents would be 
supportive and uh, they would even encourage them to bring their partners home and into their beds and uh, stuff happens. Uh, that is something that I don't think I'll ever get used to. Uh, coming from Uganda, it's it's just the weirdest thing. Well, I think uh, I think the reason why uh, people uh, do it like that is because if often if you tell a, like a rebellious teenager, hey, you're not allowed to date that person, they're still going to date them. They're just not going to tell you about it. Like, and then you will be like uninvolved in everything. And if things are bad, you can't give them counsel. You can't help them. Like rebellious teenagers, they will do whatever they want. Like so, you just give up? No, you stay involved. You have two choices: either to let them do it <laughs> unsupervised, or But to help them with the supervision. Th- the thing is, like um, me growing up, mm-hmm. that was not an option. You know, not even talk about a boyfriend no but like with you you know when you were a teenager at 14 or 15 you had a girlfriend and you could bring your girlfriend in your mom's or dad's house mm. and have sex there <laughs> uh it was normal you grew up it's normal for you it's not normal for me so you understand why I, i'm still shocked yes it and is it It would yes. never probably make sense for me. Another thing you told me that was surprising to you. Wait, wait, wait. They also go on uh, family planning at that age. What kind of word is that? <laughs> Contracep- contraceptives. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> family planning. It like, sounds like they're, yeah, they're given a calendar. They go on the pill at a very young age. Yes. <clears throat> they have sex at a very young age and they drink at a very young age. Yes, that is true. Denmark has the world record in youth drinking. Not really a good thing. No. Uh, it's uh, something we struggle with. It's uh, We have some laws. It's uh, legal for children at the age of, how much is that, 16? Yeah. To buy beers and wine and at 18 you can buy hard liquor but i think this whole thing comes from uh, you know that that equality with the parents <laughs> shut up cat no sneezing no. <laughs> i have yeah. a cold yeah parents and kids in denmark are almost equal yes so In g- yeah. in general, things in Denmark have a flat hierarchy everywhere. Yeah. The teachers and the students, the boss and the employee, the parents and the children. There's not a big uh, power difference. Pe- yeah, so. Of course, the boss is a little more powerful than an employee. Of course, the teacher is a little more has a little more to say than a student. Of course, the parent has a little more to say than the children. But It's flat. It's not like so top it, it seems like it starts in the home where the kids are almost yes. equal as parents, and yes. then outside the teachers and students. Mm-hmm. Then so everything the is work uh, workplace. Yeah, in a, in a workplace also, like it's thought of as being very old school and bad. If you are the boss and you are just deciding things without involving your employees it's uh it's the method that you use you involve the 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 workers you ask them hey we have this issue i've been asked to figure out how to solve it like do you guys have any ideas oh oh this oh this and of course and often then you will talk like in a group with the boss and the employees and you will figure out okay we're doing this and sometimes there will be not not total agreeance and then the boss will say okay It's going to be like this. That experience you told me about when you were working at the Red Cross school, where the students were treating you like you were <laughs> something special. Yes, I used to work as a teacher. And amongst the places I worked was a Red Cross, where I taught refugees Danish and English and physical education, <laughs> mostly. Um, and yeah, they, some of them were like treating me like I was like a small god or something. It was very... 
uh, it, it made me feel uncomfortable. They wanted to open the door for me. They wanted to er erase my blackboard. They wanted to carry my books. Uh, uh, this guy, every time I drove into the compound, and he was like, ran out of the kitchen where he was working. Ah, oh, chicha, chicha, chicha. I, uh, and I was just like, uh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> and then one of them told you to just let it be. Yes. I, uh, yes. I, one of them, especially, he was like really about opening doors, carrying my books, erasing the blackboard, open, hey, everything. And then I talked to like one of my students I had had for a long time and I knew that he had been in Denmark for a while. And then I said to him, oh my God, it's like a little much like uh, this. And he said to me, just let him do it. It, it. it will make him so happy if you just let him do it. And yeah. I had not thought about it like that. Uh, like it would make him happy. I thought he was like doing it out of obligation because yeah. he felt like he had to. And I, I was more than him. And yeah. In Uganda, for example, we don't call our teacher by their names. No. We say teacher, teacher John or teacher. Hmm. We first put the, the hmm. name teacher. Yes. Here in Denmark... The kids would just call, you know, teachers by their names. And First that, name, yeah. That also just surprised me. I think in, in general here in Denmark, when you're working, like um, in the old system, I'm trying not to make this too boring. <laughs> in the old system, authority was given to you by your title. When you walked in the door, you were a teacher or you were a psychologist or you were a manager or something. And then you had authority because of that that is gone now in danish system you get authority of the way because of the way you behave if people can feel that you are qualified and you're doing well they will respect you respect is not given it's earned so if you're a bad teacher people will not respect you if you're a bad engineer people will not in, uh, respect you You have to mm. prove, you have to be good, you have to mm -hmm. show that you know what you're doing and you're a good person. Mm. Number eight, religion. Oh. In Denmark, people are not very religious. No. That was shocking to yeah. me too. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear that. I went to church one time and there were only old people. Well, Danish church. There's different churches in Denmark. There's yes. the Danish church. The National. Church, and then there's... <laughs> State Church, uh, the, the, the National State Church, and then there's Frikirka, free churches, I guess. You can make your own African church. churches, or yeah, 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 or or if you are Jehovah's Witness, or if you are yeah. Catholic, or whatever. Yeah. The National State Church is Protestant. Yeah, you will not find young people there. Really, they are just senior citizens, mm. and uh, yeah, people are not really religious. If you tell people you're religious and you go to church every Sunday. They will respect that, but at the back of their mind, they'll be thinking, he's one of the crazy people. You know, well, they'll think something is up with you. People well, don't really believe in God. Well, that is how Danish people look at Americans. Sorry, Americans. Uh, when they start talking about church, when you hear like serious politicians saying that God has chosen them or something, then Danish people are like... What is he mentally like? Is something wrong? Like, he he can't be serious. <laughs> We changed to the Protestant Church, like, I don't know, six hundred years ago or something, and it's uh, more relaxed. And definitely, the way that we have developed it is a very relaxed way. We some people say we are cultural Christians. We, yeah, we like the. Christmas. The, yeah, we like the, the Easter and those things. And we also like the messages, like be good to your neighbor, don't uh, kill people. Like all the messages, we mm. believe in them. But going to church, praying, singing. Saying, hey, hey, God, God bless you. God will, <laughs> God help me pass my exams. Yes. Then, well, yeah, I remember you saying some things and also us meeting some people in the start. And I was confused because I thought they meant it when they said things like that, when they said, hey, I will pass my exam, God willing. And then I was like, oh, I think you should study instead. Like, if you're just waiting for God <laughs> to fix that exam, 
<laughs> I will go wrong. They just say it. Yeah, but uh, in Denmark, people will take that literal. People will think you mean it because ah. we don't say that. So Danish people are not religious. No. Um, if you're religious, they will really think you're crazy, and and they will really think you're crazy. Yeah. Not joking. No. The only time of year there are really people in church is for Christmas. Yeah, people and that too mostly old people. Yeah, them. a lot of old people. Yes. And number nine. Number nine. Candy. Mm-hmm. Friday candy. Mm-hmm. Friday candy. That is when all the kids get candy on um, Friday. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Every Friday, kids get candy. And usually you watch some children's thing with them on the TV. When I just came to Denmark, I was met with candy like all over the place. You would go to the mall and there's these uh, dispensers. I, dispensers. Or I had mm. never seen anything like that in Uganda. So I was like, wow. There's candy everywhere. Yes. In my house, I didn't really in, uh, practice that Friday candy thing once in a while. Mm. But when I met him, mm. <laughs> Friday candy was a thing. And it's not only for kids. Some adults too. I was shocked. She has learned. In the start, <laughs> she used to eat like two pieces or something. Now, <laughs> she enjoys candy. A lot of candy is for kids. Oh, but I'm and a kid. a kid. You didn't know I'm a kid? Another funny story about candy is our first date. The video will be linked mm. here somewhere. When we met on our first date, we met at a cinema and we stood in line to get tickets. And then before we went into the cinema, as the most natural thing in the world, I said to Connie, should we get some candy first? It was not really a question because the answer is always yes. Like, who goes to the cinema and doesn't eat candy? Are you a psycho? Huh? And then she looks at me like, I am a psycho. (laughs) Candy? (laughs) And then I'm looking at the big candy store at the cinema. No, can we just have popcorn? And then I was a little worried. (laughs) Yeah. That was weird. Candy. Candy is a thing in Denmark. Like, they eat a lot of sugar. I think that's why there's a lot of diabetes in Denmark. Well, I think we eat a lot of sugar from from candy. I think when I notice things about Ugandan culture and food and whatever, like that tea <laughs> has more sugar than tea. <laughs> if they make some of that deep fried bread thing, <laughs> it has a ton of sugar. Number 10. Yes. Sex and nudity. Yes. Was this a list of the things you loved? And then uh, it was. Well, was shocking. Sex, sex it was just shocking. Nudity. Sex everywhere. Sex on the buses. Sex on the train. You were having sex on the bus? No. Sex and nudity on the buses. At the beach. <laughs> yeah. Commercials. But everywhere. It's in your face. Yes. We are very open-minded. Uh... Pornography. I think Denmark was the first country in the world who made it legal in the 60s. So yeah. we are very open-minded, people say, about it. Yes, uh, the kissing. When I just come to Denmark, the kissing was... <laughs> so when I was just new in Denmark, I would sit in the train feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> like, should I close my kids' eyes or something? Ah, uh, My kid didn't really care. <laughs> No, they don't. Yeah. And then one time I'd heard of, of this nice beach in Klampenbol. It was around November. Cold. It, very cold. So I didn't go there to swim. I went there to check the beach. So in summer, maybe we would go there. Mm-hmm. I saw this woman coming on a bicycle. She put down her bike, walked towards the... Like a small bridge to yeah. jump in the sea. And then she just took off all her clothes. And then she just walked like calmly just jumped in the water and I was like am I still the only person here yes but there could be people looking she's naked then she came out and she just walked slowly and bothered and I was the one getting bothered (laughs) but don't you think it says something Uh, about how she feels she's not embarrassed about her body she feels comfortable and not ashamed and not 
impressed. Yeah. I think it, I understand how it can be a little much if you're not used to it, but I also think it's powerful. It's very common for women to lay topless at normal beaches. We have special beaches where you can be totally nude, um, but laying topless is very, very common. And yeah, in winter, a lot of people, especially older people, they go swimming nude uh, in winter. And I don't care. People can be naked. It doesn't like how, they're not bothering me. I was being bothered, and then I realized it's just me. Now it's like, why should I be bothered? And then I'm to go swimming. Mm -hmm. Then you have to go for a shower first. And mm -hmm. then they have these common areas where you have to all shower. Yes. And then you can, there's no private thing where you can shower privately. No. Or, un or undress. You have to take off your clothes some other place and then walk to the shower. And then it's open and then shower and everyone is just naked. And there's also kids there, like these like small boys, at least six years. So women can take their small sons with them into the women's changing room. And vice versa. Yes. Men can also yeah. take their small daughters. daughters. Yeah, but that is funny. Well, it's, it's a, the reason behind it, one of the reasons behind it is that we want children to have like a natural relationship to their bodies, to not feel ashamed of them and not to always think that being naked is the same as having sex. Like, it's not the same thing. Of course, when you're having sex, you will often be naked. But just because you're naked doesn't mean sex is involved. It just means you haven't gotten your clothes. So it's, okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that the reason? Yeah. It's, it's like we, are, we are able to be naked without it being sexual. Okay. Also, something that has been uh, mentioned recently about Denmark is um, our Danish national TV station has a children's show, a new oh, one, yeah. called John Dillerman. He is wearing like a jumpsuit, knitted <laughs> jumpsuit, and he has a very long penis where the suit is also like it's a onesie. And his penis is like, I don't know, 10, 20 meters long, so he can use it to pick up things and do things and whatever. So he's doing that, and children think it's hilarious, and they don't think about sex. They just think it's very funny, him using his penis like that. It was in uh, international news, in American news, and they were appalled by it. Maybe we'll put a little clip here. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> it's not! And then, and then there's, there's this show. Yes. Yes. Man, it's a lot of stuff. We watched it. I think it's a concept from UK, actually, but it's uh, it's all also in Denmark. It's called uh, Date My Noin, Date Me Naked. So it takes one participant into a TV show, and then they're standing there with the host, and then there will be five tubes in front of them, like cylinders with people in them. And then the people in the cylinders are naked. And then... You, they get shown more and more of the naked bodies of the people in there, and then they comment on them. Oh, I like the tattoo that one has on its there on their leg. Oh, I like that one. When they see more, oh, I like that butt. It just it's goes so sexy. and they start showing the butt. Also, the private parts. The private parts, and then mm. and then at the end, uh, two of the people in the cylinders are left, uh, and they meet the participant who also gets naked, and then the, they talk, and then the participant chooses one of the two naked people to go on a date with them. Weird, right? Very weird. <laughs> it's not I weird will not be you. joining, but... <laughs> it's not weird for you, it's normal. Oh, it's but... a little... It's new, it's new. But, of course, if a physical appearance is very important to you, well... Then you can get it out of the way quickly. Anyways, that was some of the top 10 things that shocked me in Denmark. Mm -hmm. There's still other things, of course, but... Yes. And now they're not shocking to you anymore. <laughs> no, not really. I'm just not comfortable yet with some things, mm -hmm. especially with the teenagers and yeah. that freedom. Okay. Let's go get naked. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Comment down below if, yeah. you, if you think this is shocking. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you are a non-Danish person living in Denmark, comment down below. If you uh, if you have thought about the same things. Yeah. If you're Danish, what do you think about that? Was that surprising to me? Because definitely some of the things Connie mentioned to me uh, in the time we've been together, I was like, why is why is that a thing for her? Why is that important? Why? That's weird. Yeah. So comment down below. Thanks for watching. And give this video a like if you liked it. And share it with your friends. Oh yeah. Yeah. Carolina, remember to share this video. Yeah, well. even though you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.